When getting into PC gaming, some people would think that you have to spend a lot of money to get decent performance. But what if you could prove them wrong for not that much? Hey guys, it's me. I'm gonna try something new today, a PC hardware video. I've seen a lot of videos on budget PC hardware, but a lot of other creators do things that aren't really relatable. Yeah, sure, you could get an old Optiplex and throw any old card in it, and that's a gaming PC, but that's just not that feasible when you may have an old family PC that's no longer in use, ripe for a long overdue upgrade. Getting into the build, we will be using a Dell XPS 8300 from around 2009. Fairly old, but still somewhat okay performance for today. If it ran modern things, that is. The state of this PC is dire, running a very old install of Windows 7 that is very slow, with an old ATI Radeon card that notoriously crashes when getting too hot. This was my first serious PC, and it was not good. Performance that would only rival 2013-era netbooks packed inside a dust-filled case, and this isn't looking too good. The other parts inside the machine are fairly good parts, but the Windows 7 installation just isn't cutting it anymore. On a fairly unimpressive Dell OEM motherboard, this PC is rocking a solid second generation Sandy Bridge Intel Core i7-2600, 16GB of DDR3 1333MHz RAM, and the terrible AMD Radeon HD 6450 1GB, which is the problem child here. That is the only component we are going to be swapping out. Instead, we're going to be using a fairly solid GTX 650Ti Boost 2GB by EVGA. Along with a solid selection of ports, it's running at a max rate of 1GHz with 768 CUDA cores with 2GB of GDDR5 memory, SLI support, and a base level of DirectX 12 support, so this is looking pretty good. Now most of you are probably asking me why I didn't just put a 750Ti in it, as it's much more popular and it's also newer. However, looking at benchmarks of both cards reveals a worse turnout. The 650Ti boost reveals that in most specific benchmarks, it pulls ahead of the 750Ti, with the only thing really going for the 750Ti is its market share. Even on eBay, the 650Ti boost tends to sell for even less than the 750Ti while having better specs to boot. Overall, it's just a much better value. Since I already know this PC works, that means there's no troubleshooting required. Right now, it's more about getting Windows 10 on here and getting the drivers installed. This was a cinch. It didn't take that long, aside from spending about 30 minutes getting programs installed while getting rid of bloatware that didn't need to be there in the first place. General desktop usage was amazing. Most programs opened almost immediately, and when there was some stutter, it didn't last for very long. I chose Opera GX for this PC as it has hard limiters that will allow us to take full advantage of the system without losing performance. Chrome is not a good option for older computers due to it eating a lot of RAM, and since the RAM we do have is slow, it's going to be very precious to us. In the next benchmarks, I have used MSI Afterburner to overclock the card just a little bit, to squeeze out the last bit of performance to ensure it would do as well as it could. Here we have the story building classic Half-Life 2. Running full 1080p with all high settings and no VSync, we have a very expected but still surprising 286 frames per second average, the 1% and not 0.1% lows being that low due to the game stopping to load. However, the game was at its lowest, about 80 FPS. A standard affair for most people, this game is still fun. Next up is Minecraft, running 1080p with fancy graphics, 6 chunks loaded, and VSync turned off. We saw a very impressive 116 FPS average all around, with a still impressive 1% and 0.1% lows of 47.6 FPS and 29.4 FPS, those being due to the game first loading in. You could probably get away with running a few shaders with the setup, but you should be careful not to do anything too demanding of the system. Here is the likes of Counter-Strike Source. While not nearly as demanding as its counterpart CSGO, it still can be demanding for older machines, and I wanted to test it out in terms of some basic esports level games. It runs fairly well with a combined average of 285 and 260 FPS, as I benchmarked the built-in one as well as the actual gameplay, then 1% and 0.1% lows weren't too far behind the average here. Another one here is Skyrim. This is the worst the PC has done so far, with only around a 60 FPS average. However, this is due to the game being capped at 60 frames per second, so this means it's possible it could have gotten a better turnout. The 1% and 0.1% lows didn't look too good here. I'm not really sure why it dropped so many frames, but it did happen. 
next to last to CSGO. When nothing is going on, it gets a very impressive 300 FPS at 1080p high, but since this is an esports game, performance matters, things are going to happen. The average frames per second was actually 133, and running the workshop benchmark reveals major FPS drops to the low teens when in heavy smoke. Other than that, the game keeps steadily above 100 FPS in most situations, you just may want to turn down your video settings just a bit. Quake 2 RTX did not launch for obvious reasons. Lastly, we have a newer title, Phasmophobia. Since this runs in DirectX 11, this would be more demanding of the PC, and with no surprise, it runs very well. With a solid 87 FPS average, this is more than playable, and you can get busy with scaring your friends in this game due to no skips. With the 1% and 0.1% lows in this game were around 60 FPS, with occasional stutters due to players loading in at the beginning of the round, this game is more than playable. This PC has surprised me thoroughly while I was benchmarking the whole thing. Time and time again with old to newer games, the performance was roughly the same all around with good visual quality and performance to boot. This may be a build you would want to emulate for not that much as an asking price. With 650 Ti boost at the core of the system, I would heartily recommend this build. Thank you all so much for watching this video, I will see you all again in the next one. Good night.